Grace and joy to you, family. It's Pastor, and it's Friday, and it is our last man of moment for the week. Thank you, beloved, this week for joining me and walking through the amazing book of Acts. We are in Acts chapter 17, and on yesterday, we discovered that Paul and Silas are on their third missionary tour, and they come to the city of Thessalonica. And in Thessalonica, they went first to the synagogue where they ministered to their countrymen. And it was there that they had great success. The Bible said in verse 4 that a great multitude of devout Greeks and of Jews, leading women, they joined Paul and Silas when they heard the good news. Now, that's where we left off on yesterday. So far, their mission is looking good. They are having great ministry success. And then we come to our verse today. Oh my. We're going to talk about for just a few minutes this morning, ministry opposition on the field. Father, thank you so much for this fabulous Friday where we finish our amount of moments for the week and ponder the thoughts of the kingdom together as beloved brothers and sisters. So open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, Breathe on us now. Give us wisdom and insight and guidance and direction for our days and our weekend together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So glad to see so many of you coming on. Thank you guys for watching and being faithful followers of the Word of God every day as we are maneuvering through the COVID-19 situation. So here we are, beloved. Here's the picture. The brothers are doing great work. God has given them favor. Many people are coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Churches are being planted and started. And now in Thessalonica, for the first time there in that city, they reach opposition. The Bible says, but in Acts 17 verse 5, the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious of Paul and Silas, they took some of the evil men from the marketplace. These would have been the, the thugs in the city, right? And they gathered together a mob. And they set all the city in an uproar. And they attacked the house of Jason. And they sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason instead and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Jason has harbored them, and these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king whose name is Jesus. <laughs> I love that. And they troubled the crowd, and the rulers of the city, when they heard these things, they were taken and shaken and they took the security from Jason and the rest and they let them go. Oh, beloved, when we come to this portion of the text, we see that the same thing that happened this week in Philippi in the life of Paul and Silas happens again when they get to the next city in Thessalonica because there were some haters who rejected the biblical theology of the Messiah and the Christ coming to save men from their sin, they got angry. And this time, what they did was they went into the city and gathered up the local gangsters, the brothers who were known for throwing down and committing riots, and they rallied them together on their corner or in their side. And then they mobbed the house of Jason. Now, this is powerful because Jason must have been a new believer that just had gotten uh, converted when Paul and Silas had went to the synagogue. He invited them into his home and he was caring for the messengers as the church would begin there in his home. But here we see also, because he became a believer and a follower of Christ, it cost him something. Can I remind you today, beloved, that it cost you and I something too to be followers of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, I know we live in the land of the free and the brave. This is supposed to be a democracy, but let me tell you something. Satan is the ruler and the prince of this world. That's right. He is the dark one, the, the evil one, the evil spirit that rules and reigns in the systems of humanity on earth. And he always opposes the work of the gospel. But I'm so glad that we see in this text that if it happened to those believers back then, it's surely going to happen to you and I. And as we study uh, the acts of the Holy Spirit and we look at the life of the apostles and their witnessing ministries, you and I can be well assured that trouble will come our way too. It's going to come, beloved, but we can rejoice again, as I mentioned on yesterday, because greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. Oh, I'm happy. Let me say it this way. If this is a preaching moment, I would say, oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. <laughs> can I get an amen right there? It's Friday. There may be persecution, but it's Sunday's coming where victory is always guaranteed to the child of God. Well, this great episode in the book of Acts in Acts chapter 17 is going to be powerful. On Monday, when we come back, we'll look at how they handled that opposition and what they did to continue on in the work of the gospel. Now, on this Sunday, parenthetically, we're going to be preaching about this same idea and topic, talking about Jesus and opposition in the ministry. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a great, great time in the Lord as we return back to that great book of Luke, Luke chapter 11, and pick up where we left off several weeks ago in our exegetical work through the preaching and teaching of God's word. Right before we started that series of uh, ministry, maximizing ministry in the global pandemic. Well, I love you, beloved. Thank you guys for dialing on and being faithful to study God's word with me every day, right here at noon, Monday through Friday for 10 to 15 minutes of Madam Moments with Pastor. I love you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Good to see you all. So glad you guys are here. I love you and may the Lord bless you. I hope to see you in our outdoor chapel ministry this Sunday. Come in your cars, bring your lawn chairs, social distancing and face masks. Let's worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm looking for you, all right? Father God, in the name of Jesus, my prayer is that you will bless your servants today. Strengthen them in every area of their life and their families and their ministries that they do in your name. Go with them, above them, behind them, beneath them, but most of all within them to accomplish the things you have set them forward to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank God. Amen. I love you, family. Peace. See you in the Lord's house.